Hello there, beautiful, amazing, and gorgeous people. In this video, we're going to be talking about something that I've been trying to do for around four weeks, and that is to get one of the hardest certifications that there is to get out there, and that is the Professional Google Cloud Architect certification. Now, the reason why I want to get the certification is, well, there's several reasons. One of them is that it's like I said, uh, from what I've read, it's one of the hardest certifications to get. Number two, it's going to validate a lot of the skills that I'm wanting to have, namely the cloud technologies. I could certify myself in AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or one of the many others that there are out there. But again, I want to do this one because apparently it's the hardest. Now, of course, in order for me to get the certification, I need to gather study materials. I need to prepare. I need to take some practice tests. I need to make sure that I know the technologies that there's going to be in the test, etc. So to learn everything that I need to, I've decided to use um, some of the following tools, which is articles from medium.com, videos from a website that I truly love, and that is Pluralsight, tutorials from cloud.google.com, practice tests from cloud.google.com, courses from Coursera, and at the end of studying all those things, we'll see where our journey takes us. But I, I'm hoping that we can get the certification done maybe in around three to four weeks if I really apply myself. But if it takes longer, then we'll have to make a new plan or something like that. So let's take a look at everything that is required to become a Google Cloud Architect and the things that Google recommends that you study before you take on the test. So as you can see here, I have the Google Cloud Professional Cloud Architect certification page open. And this page, as we can see on the, on the left menu, it's going to guide us through what the exam contains. It's going to show us a guide for the exam. It's going to show us a practice exam and so on and so forth. I don't need to reread those to you. Now, if I start scrolling down, it says that as a professional cloud architect, I should be able to design and plan a, a cloud solution, manage and provision the cloud, design for security and compliance, analyze and optimize technical business pr processes, manage implementations of cloud architecture, and ensure solutions and operations reliability. That sounds like a mouthful, and it truly is. When you actually get to look at the number of services that there are in Google Cloud, there's quite a few services. Now, if you compare it to something like AWS, it doesn't really contain that, much, that many services. The reason for this is because what I've realized over the past few weeks that I've been studying about Google Cloud, Google Cloud tries to simplify the services a little bit. So instead of, for example, having, I don't know, five different storage services like AWS does, Google Cloud puts it under one single storage service and they just have different tiers under that storage service. So it's easier to understand that, hey, this service helps me to do storage, but then I can drop things into different tiers to make sure that I am handling the data that I don't access frequently or the data that I access sometimes, but not really too often, and also the data that I access all the time. Anyway, let's continue going down this, this page. So we're going to look at the cost, the, the format, etc. So it says that the exam is two hours in length, which is pretty massive, from my perspective at least. The registration fee is $200, so if I fail, I pretty much lose $200. Hopefully that doesn't happen. And then the exam format is a multiple choice, multiple select test. What that means is that when I'm asked a question, the question is going to say, hey, pick the best answer. Or, hey, there's seven answers. Pick the ones that you think fit best for this scenario. Now, the one where you only pick one answer, that's sort of easy, at least from my perspective. When we start talking about, hey, there's eight answers, give us the top three, that starts getting really complex because there are situations in which Without getting a lot more context about the situation, it's hard to make a best choice. So hopefully in the test, they give us a scenario that is very explicit and can actually tell us what we should do. So it says also here that the recommended experience uh, for this test is three plus years of industry experience plus one plus years designing and managing solutions using GCP. Now, I don't know what the heck they mean with industry experience. I'm assuming they, they're they talking about software engineering experience, which I think I fulfilled the requirements, but we'll see. And then the one plus years designing and managing solutions using GCP. I think I also, um, I'm also good for that one. Now, the, the question here is, have I had enough experience with enough Google Cloud services to be able to pass this benchmark that they have? 
that's something that we'll see. So if we, if we continue reviewing this page, we'll see that they say, hey, if you really want to prepare for the test, basically, you need to be aware of these three case studies. And there's basically three case studies. I'm not going to read them with you guys, but they talk about three different companies with completely different situations. And they say, hey, this is actually, we'll open one of them so that you guys can take a look. But here's a case study. It says, hey, it's a fictitious scenario. Here's what the company is trying to do. Here are the business requirements. These are the technical requirements. So sometimes, for example, they'll say, hey, we need um, to update data from multiple users across many different devices that have a low level of connectivity. Well, at that point, you can start to imagine what services within the Google Cloud architecture would fit the situation. If we keep scrolling down, then we get the executive statement, which basically gives you a summary of what has happened uh, and what they want to happen. So back to the main page, the Cloud Architect page, we are going to keep scrolling down. And there's a training section, which I have found to be sort of helpful. And they talk about, well, there's only a couple courses here. I'm not sure what's up when I... Last check this site, there was actually more training on this site. They included courses from Coursera. They included uh, a few articles, but I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy and I just imagined it. So if we keep scrolling down, I see something that says hands-on practice. And I, I'm not going to click through these links right now, but basically what well, something that I did find before I have yet to use it is that Google Cloud offers a service called Quick Labs which allows you to basically go into all of the Google Cloud services and play around with them, follow a few labs, so that you get some hands-on experience. And all of this is offered absolutely free. Additionally, Google Cloud also offers what is called the free tier, which if you are familiar with other cloud services, they do something very similar, where they tell you, hey, if you're gonna use our virtual environments, we can give you 100 hours for free every single month. Or if you're gonna use our database systems, we can give you this much uptime for free every single month and so on and so forth. So it's, it's a really nice way for you to, or for us to experience the power of many different cloud providers and make a choice of which one we like better. Now here's a practice exam, and that is something that we'll be doing later together. I wanna to take the practice exam to see where my lack of knowledge is, because I'm assuming that at the end they'll give me a score or maybe they'll tell me which answers I got wrong and why. So what we're gonna do is, again, look at this test, we're gonna answer the test, we're gonna see how we do, and hey, maybe if we get 100% on the test, we'll just go ahead and, and schedule our our exam, but if we get, I don't know, anywhere lower than 80, I think that's where I'll set the mark. If we get anywhere lower than 80, then I'll I'll spend more time, of course, studying the places where I feel either a little bit uncomfortable or truly uncomfortable. If we keep scrolling down, we'll see some additional resources. So we'll see some labs, which if I look at the link down on the, t on the bottom left, it says it's gonna take us to google.quicklabs. So this is the service that I was talking about. And they have some hands-on labs about Kubernetes, Kubernetes engine, some infrastructure labs, and they also take us to the documentation that talks about, well, apparently it's some generic documentation. And then at the end, they tell us, hey, go ahead and schedule your exam. Anyway, I wanted to definitely take you guys on this journey of becoming a Google Cloud architect. I don't know what will happen. I don't know if I'll succeed or fail. If I fail, I don't know if I'll try again. And if I try again, I don't know how many times. So I truly hope that this journey together ends up in a in a great way, but if not, hey, at least we tried, right? That is it for this video. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to watch it. If you like it, you would do me a huge, massive favor if you click that like button, subscribe, share it with a thousand friends, and tell them that I appreciate every single one of them. Thanks again, and we'll see you later.